Hi there. We're going to do a, uh, another letter of the alphabet today. Um, so today's going to be another one. to be N, new normal, right? Um, I belong to several Facebook groups for stroke, uh, stroke talk, young stroke survivors, and the stroke coffee house. Uh, if you can only join these if you've had a stroke um, or you're the caregiver for someone who's had a stroke who is unable to communicate. Um, if you are simply a caregiver of someone that's had a stroke, there are Facebook groups ju just for you. New normal. Um, it is a bone of contention, consternation on many conversations I see on the Facebook group or groups. Um, in my conversations with my therapist and people around me, um, it is literally the largest conversation I'm ever going to have. And it's one that is constantly evolving. So you're going to learn to hate the phrase new normal. Why is that? Well, one, you didn't ask for this. If you did, you're fucking dumb. Right? No one's going to ask for a stroke. Right? Um, and if you did, yeah, you made a really shitty decision. Um, your new normal is constantly evolving. Um, so, step one, new normal, have stroke. Step two, new normal, go to hospital. Step three, new normal, have several panic attacks like you've never had in your entire life. Uh, step four, new normal, get the treatment and then get out of the hospital and then carry on with your life, however that looks. Well, your new normal, there are going to be periods where you're going to suffer from abject terror, just complete terror. There are going to be periods where you are going to have to deal with some of the largest emotional highs and lows of your lifetime, right? Um, when you finally can have a conversation <clears throat> without stuttering or stammering or have word selection issues, when you can finally walk around the block and have a fairly reciprocated gait, or you can do stairs without major issues, or you can put on shoes that you can tie, um, you know, buttons, cut your own food. The great thing is because every stroke is so unique and every individual again is so unique, your, your, your new normal is unique to you, right? Again, you will share commonalities with other stroke assaulters. Um, you will share similar stories with other stroke assaulters. But what your new normal looks like in no way can be directly and evenly compared with what someone else's new normal looks like. Um, and for us young stroke folk, it's even worse, right? Because you don't look like you had a stroke possibly, such as myself. Um, people would never suspect by looking at you that you had a stroke. So you, your new normal will be constantly evolving, right? From when you got out of the hospital to, you know, when you could have a conversation without stuttering or stammering to um, when you could, you know, do anything that you couldn't do or do it on the same way you could do it before. Like one of my biggest achievements was um, stairs. I did six flights of stairs up and down twice, right? And I did them in fairly decent times. Um, push-ups, I was able to do a number of push-ups. Um, you know, so you're gonna have these little successes and each one is part of your new normal, but you're gonna learn to hate the phrase new normal, right? A couple of reasons that I've learned to really hate the term new normal. Um, one, it's an evolving thing. Two, everything you do from now on, since the day of your stroke, irrevocably is going to be your new normal, right? Irrevocably, it's gonna be your new normal. Um, you are going to have to deal with situations and scenarios that before your stroke were easily dealt with and didn't require really any major effort or thinking. And post-stroke, yeah, it, it might take some, some work. However, as much as you're going to hate the phrase new normal, right, uh, it has a flip side. It has a beneficial side. 
Um, and I realized this yesterday um, when I was in therapy. Uh, so part of your new normal is you get to redefine yourself in a way, right? Um, you get to redefine what your relationships look like. You get to redefine who you will have a relationship with. You get to redefine how you will interact with inside those relationships. You get to redefine many things about yourself. Because many things are going to happen post-stroke. They're, they're going to impact either your ability to maintain relationships, your willingness to maintain relationships, or certain factors, events are going to happen that you're just going to decide that as a relationship I choose to hold on to, that as a relationship I choose to keep a distance, that as a relationship I'm not really sure about, and that one, fuck you, you're done, right? So, and the great news is, you get to make these decisions, right? Um, and if you decide to monitor a relationship because you're not sure where it's supposed to go, so be it. If you choose to keep someone a little bit distant because you don't know if you can trust them, so be it. If you choose to keep someone that you had distant or weren't sure about, bring them closer, so be it. If there's someone that you decide to cut off and like, fuck you, you're done, so be it, right? Um, now, that doesn't mean you get to be a dick, right? Just because you had a stroke, it does not mean you get to be an asshole, right? Let me just put that out there. Um, and in no way do I intend to go out and start being an instant asshole just that stroke. That's not sort of the game plan. But it gives me some opportunities that I might have either not had before or I might have overlooked um, before. Um, so, and I'm going to exploit some of those opportunities as best I can. Um, and again, this all this little epiphany came uh, working with my wonderful wonderful therapist. Um, and you know, I would suggest and recommend for anyone that's been through a stroke, you need to go to psychological counseling. Right? You need to you need to find a way to to make things better, right, uh, with your brain, because you've had legitimately the most traumatic event that you could possibly have in your lifetime, right? So. There's going to be many elements of your new normal that are going to be sort of discombobulating, disconcerting, right? Um, you're going to be disorganized. There's going to be a level of disharmony, right? There's just going to be things that you don't know how you're going to be able to do it, right? Or when you're going to be able to do it or where you're going to be able to do it. Um, and you're going to have a lot of new discoveries, both neutral, negative and positive, right? Um, oh, great. I can tie my own shoes still. Perfect. Right. Oh, shit. I hate buttons, right? Um, you know, uh, or, you know, you're going to find out that you might not be going home for six months. But then again, your new normal is always evolving. So your new normal will take some getting used to, right? Um, and that's just a thing, right? You're going to have to get used to your new normal, and that's just all there is to it. Uh, what that'll look like for you is an individual affair. On the flip side... Uh, the the beneficial side of the new normal, right? Now, none of what I'm about to say applies specifically to me, so let me put that proviso out there, right? This might be the time that you decide to go back to school. No, I have no intention of going back to school. This might be the time that you decide to go to therapy. Well, I'm already doing that, so perfect. Uh, this might be the time that you decide to... Um, Okay, part of my new normal, I started a YouTube channel. Why did I start this? It was just to document this journey, and it sort of turned into this thing that it is, and exactly what it is, I really don't know, but oh well. Um, part of your new normal might be you decide to take a painting. Uh, part of your new normal might be you decide to take up other things, right? So exactly what you intend to take up is completely up to you, right? Um, and that's, that's all situational individual, right? I don't know what you plan on doing uh, or where you plan on doing it, but you're going to make some decisions. You may decide that you might not be able to go back to work, or you may decide you might want to change where you work, or you might decide when you go back to work, you're going to work in a different capacity, right? There's going to be new things of this new normal where you get to redevelop, reinvigorate, 
uh, and reintegrate and re-identify yourself, right? Um, nothing wrong with that, right? So you can use this new normal as a process of discovery, right? And again, just because you're going through your new normal and you need to make changes does not give you the license to be an asshole, right? You do not have the license to be an asshole, right? You got to be respectful, right? You got to be decent, right? You got to treat people with, you know, kindness and dignity and respect. And you got to, you know, that whole golden rule thing. You got to treat people the way you would prefer to be treated. Um, that being said, you need to be assertive and not aggressive. You need to approach people in a manner that tells them what you need and why you need it, how you need it, where you need it. These are my needs, right? Um, and you've got to, you've got to, you know, be kind to people, but you can use this period of new normal, right? To allow yourself to rediscover yourself, to allow yourself to shape that new identity. So there is, there is some liberation from a stroke in my opinion. Um, and again, I don't speak for everyone that's had a stroke. This is just kind of me, right? That after a stroke, you can use this adventure, if you will, and you can use it to your benefit and you can use it to your advantage. Now, what is your new normal going to look like? I'm just going to be honest. I have no idea. What is my new normal going to look like? I'll be honest. I have no idea. I know I have some targets. I have some goals. Um, I have things I would like to do, um, things I want to attempt to accomplish, how successful any of that will be, I have no idea. I legitimately have no idea. Um, but what I do know is I'm going to take this time to try to redevelop myself, right? To try to um, make things better where when I can um, and I'm gonna take the time to <clears throat> determine exactly what my needs are that I haven't already figured out um, and how to get there okay. so there are many things about your new normal you're gonna find disturbing there are many things about your new normal you're gonna find discouraging there are many things about your new normal it's just it's just a new journey of discovery um, for those of you that have had a massive stroke, right, you're just going to learn how to eat and walk again, right? And I realize that's going to be very humbling, okay? Uh, for those of you that have lucked out like myself, um, you're going to end up, in a manner of speaking, trying to figure out where, how, when you fit back in again, right? Now, even though you've had a massive stroke, you may still be able to go back to work. Even though you've had a minor stroke, you may not be able to go back to work. So, and again, that'll be part of your new normal. And, and part of you, your new normal will be a, a rather large amount of appointments. Because you're going to have all your doctors, right? General practitioner, neurologist, whatever. You're going to have your speech, your language people. You're going to have your occupational therapist, your physiotherapist, counselor, or psychologist, whatever the case may be. You might need to go to an eye doctor. You might need to go here, you go there. So part of your new normal is going to be scheduling your time. Okay. So, and during each of those sessions, eventually you're no longer going to need the speech and language person, or you're no longer going to need the physiotherapist, or you're no longer going to need the occupational therapist. So as one piece of that journey ends, you place that little piece of your new normal, like, okay, that's done, and you go find out the new section of your new normal. And eventually, how close were your new normal be to your old normal? I, I, I don't know. I, I legitimately don't know. Um, my goal is to get my new normal, uh, physically speaking, um, ability speaking, to match my old normal as, as, as possible. Uh, in other respects, I'm going to try to deviate drastically from my old normal to my new normal um, because I'm going to need to do that for me. Okay? Um, and people may have issues with that, but go see the Zed video, 
Z is for zero. Um, that'll explain that. Right? So, anyways, uh, at that point, if you happen to like what you've been watching over the past three and a half months, please like, share, subscribe, comment. If you know someone that's going currently through the uh, throes of their own stroke or supporting someone as they assault through their stroke, please recommend the channel to them. They might get some benefit out of this. They probably will, right? And then at that point, please like, share, subscribe, comment. If there's anything you want to see me cover, please, you can get a hold of me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com. And then we can have a conversation there if there's something you want to see me cover. And then if you believe you or someone around you is going through the throes of a stroke, uh, which the, the normal symptoms could be uh, facial droop, uh, inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, inability to smile equally effectively or at all, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, uh, general body weakness, weakness on one side, or inability to stand, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple could save a life.